Denver Broncos Mile High View, no commercials, no bullshit. Uh, I want to start off by saying that um, I will not be able to watch the Green Bay game, and I will be offline for for 10 days as I will be out at sea as I in on the ocean and on a ship. And the way I understand it is there will be no game for me. Maybe somebody will be kind enough to, to let me know some details. Uh, the first thing I want to say is, uh, can we please stop whining about Garrett, Garrett Bowles? I actually want to start calling him Garrett Holds, but I'm sure that's not original. Um, can we stop whining and complaining about Garrett Bowles? Because um, when he does his ridiculous shit out on the field, uh, I mean, look, let me put it this way. Do you, do you get mad because a, a, a snake is a snake? Do you get mad because a scorpion is a scorpion, because a shark is a shark? Um, I mean, it is what it is. So every time that Garrett Bowles or Garrett Holds, whatever, however you want to call this guy, screws up, sabotages a drive, I mean, it's... It really is now you look up at the front office. Forget, he is what he is. And, you know, Elway knew what he was getting when he got Garrett Holds. Back in college, he was a hold, he was holding then, too, and doing the same, you know. And, you know, Cecil Lammy is a talking head <clears throat> on Sports Talk Radio. And he's sounding now just like me. You know, while you all were clamoring for quarterbacks, I mean, can we just, you know, get the left tackle right? Can we replace Clady? That was what he was saying. And I've been preaching this for a long time. You know, you got to build from the lines out. It's just, that's the way it is. That's how the good teams, the, the, I said this over and over ad nauseum. I'm saying it, but you can research it yourself. The dynasties, that's what they did. Um, so, you know, this segues us into uh, a couple of things. It segues us into the Green Bay, but I want to talk about the Denver defense. Um. I'm convinced more and more that the Denver defense, it, it has been falling apart each year since 2015, more just crumbling and crumbling. And I just don't understand this, you know, every day, every year, the, 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 oh, it's going to be 2015 all over again. You know, and some of you can't be blamed because you listen to sports talk radio. And, uh, I, but I am convinced that this just is not a very good defense. So all of you, you know, what's also funny is that, uh, speaking of sports talk radio, the same sports talk radio that was, you know, selling you a, uh, a cool, selling you Kool-Aid from their Kool-Aid stand, you know, uh, tw 12 and, f and 4, 10 and 6, all this nonsense, is now telling you, you know, about fire sales, you know, get rid of Von Miller for draft picks. And I'm like, but who is the who's picking the draft picks? The same guy that picked Bowles and some of the others that are even on here to this date. You know, I'm not sure Hamilton was really a good pick, because you know. But anyway, the bottom line is is I just don't think that the defense is that good, and that's why Von Miller is and and Chubb together can't do what they. Can do, and then there's the can the offense, you know the right now you got Case Keenum throwing more touchdown passes than Flacco with less talent around him. But then again, you know Keenum doesn't have Garrett holds, you know sabotaging his drives like uh, like Flacco does. And again, when don't get mad at Garrett Bowles. He, I mean, he is who he is. I mean, it, it's now got to the point where. You look up at the front office every time he holds. You just look up at the front office and just, you know, like this is now a management thing. You know, you got Munchak here saying all kinds of ridiculous crap, garbage, having to step, you know, 
you know, but again, it's their first year with this guy. You know, they, they haven't been working with him for three years or what, you know. I don't know if Munchak thinks he, what he can do with this guy. Anyway, so this segues, segues us. I want to go back to the defense just really quick. I don't think that the defense for the Denver Broncos is really any good at all. I mean, there's no – Gotsis couldn't push his way out of a paper bag. I think Der, uh, I think Wolf, if he had a Malik Jackson next to him, it would be a completely different story. You know, but he can't do it all by himself. There's no interior push. And I've been over this a thousand times, and this is what Cecil Lammy was finally talking about, people finally talking about this. But then there's another component. There's, you know, can you cover? Can anybody in the secondary cover? Maybe uh, quarterbacks are being able to have a quicker release because they're just – they're wide receivers can get open with ease. Maybe the coverage isn't as good. Maybe Harris is the only one that really can cover. They were saying that Kareem Jackson broke down. But, I mean, after six seconds, which is an eternity, you, you know, you can't expect a guy to, to co- be able to cover when there's simply not even a push. It, it's just, you know, it's a really bad situation. So this segues us into the Green Bay thing. It, it, the only way the Denver Broncos could possibly win is is like all the, the dice would have to all fall. Everything would have to fall into place. The, the stars would all have to align. I mean, Green Bay would really have to have an off day. They'd really have to have an off day. They Defensively, they would have to be... Uh, getting beat by the Broncos offense. They got Garrett Bowles, so, <laughs> you know, their defense seems to be more, much more revamped. But, uh, uh, you know, what really scares me is that they weren't making Minnesota's offensive line when they played them look like they did when they were playing Chicago. Chicago was just a mess. Their offensive line, and we couldn't even we couldn't even they we made them their offensive line look like, you know, the top offensive line in the NFL. It was pathetic. So, you know, I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, Aaron Rodgers, he, you know, Minnesota's supposed to have a decent offensive line or defensive line, and he had all day to throw a lot of his passes. And that's how Aaron Rodgers rolls. Hangs on to the ball forever. You know, maybe this, like I said, this is the game where Aaron Rodgers gets his injury and he's out again. You know, who knows? I mean, maybe that's how they get lucky. You know, but I cannot see this team even remotely beating Green Bay uh, going up there. I just don't think that defensively they even stand a chance. I don't think they have a good defense. I think they're going to get really ripped apart this defense and it's all going to start in the in, up in the front lines and everybody's going to be saying, Oh, Von Miller, this Oh, Von Miller, that he can't do it by himself. People. He's not getting any help at all from this defense. I don't think this defense is any good. I questioned it from the very beginning and I, and you know, I thought it would be better than what it is, but it, it, it it's going along the trend of decay. Um, you did, you know, you wanted lock all of you, you wanted lock. You did, and I said, let's pick a guy that can push, work with Derek Wolf and push the court, the line into the quarterback's face. Crickets. Nobody. Now they're starting to touch Cecil Lammy. Now you're starting to hear it. That was my first round draft choice. That's what I wanted. Oh, you know, don't listen to him. Whatever you do, you know, if you force that quarterback to have to hurry it up, I mean, really force him to hurry it up. Not just get let him sit back there. I mean, Mitch Trubisky wasn't throwing the ball like David Carr, or like Derek Carr. That wasn't going on. That was just another one of your sports talk radio myths. You know, they had they they had time to get to him if they if they were able to. But I don't think this this offensive line for Green Bay is it's it's Aaron Rodgers is going to have all day back there. You know, they're going to have to pull pull some, you know, but – and Fangio – well, Fangio is supposed to know Green Bay, but, you know, he's supposed to know the Bears too, wasn't he? So I just don't think he has the personnel. He just doesn't. Uh, 
I mean, Vaughn Miller's been it was this isn't the first year Vaughn Miller's been absent, but again, I've been bitching about this, and this is why I started a podcast because somebody's got to say it. Somebody's got to talk the truth about what the team's not good, and this is what needs to be done. You know, it all starts up front. You need you need interior push. You know, you need somebody to to who's on the same level as Wolf, but I mean the the quarterbacks have always had nice nice uh, clean pockets, and I don't see Aaron Rodgers having uh, anything but a nice clean pocket. He can sit there back there and just be a pocket quarterback, and take his time and wait for his receiver just to get open. No problem. You can't cover him forever. And just fire at will. You know, so uh, I don't believe that Chicago ever had a a decent offense at all. Uh, So I would expect that Rodgers is basically going to shred the Denver Broncos defense. Um, I just can't see it any other way. Offensively for the Denver Broncos, this is maybe this is where they get lucky. Maybe they 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 find something, some weakness in the and it's a shootout. I don't believe in the defense. I think the offense is gonna have to get in a shootout with Aaron Rodgers. They're just gonna have to. This is their only way they're gonna win this game. You know, is they go toe to toe, but uh but with Garrett Bowles sabotaging drives, it's just you know, I just don't see how they're gonna be able to do that. So yeah, it's not gonna get it's not gonna get any better. And like I said, every time that Garrick holds holds, you look up the front office. Now, don't get mad at Garrett Bowles. I mean, he again. Or do you get mad at a snake because he's a snake, or a scorpion because he's a scorpion? No, he is what he is, and that's like Garrett Bowles. He's he's he is what he is. He can't he can't help himself. But there was no reason he should even be on. He should have ever been on the field this year, even last year, really. So, you know, again, and I've preached about cultural change in Denver and the Broncos. But it has to start with fans, too. you got to start demanding more from your team, not just go with along with the Kool-Aid. Uh, 